In today's episode of our photography review show, we're going to be reviewing 28 photographers and their 61 images. Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of our photography review show. I hope you had a great week, I hope you're enjoying the Valentine's Day today and I hope that you're ready for another portion of photography reviews. If you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex, England and for the past 6 or 7 months I've been reviewing photos here at The Clever Photographer. Now it's been very popular and that's the reason why we had to limit the numbers to one or two photos per week per photographer and for the same reason we also take the show and divide it between three different parts. We usually start by the landscape photographers, then we look at the mixed team photography and we end up by the rest of the photography styles. Now before we jump into the reviews, I have two things I want to remind you. First one is about our new Facebook group. It's called Clever Photographer Academy. You can come and join us. It's for free. Just search on uh, Facebook for Clever Photographer Academy. And what we do there, we talk all things photography. We run regular photographic competitions. We also answer your photographic questions and we review your photos throughout the week. So if you haven't joined us yet, make sure you head there and join us today. And the second thing, we need to look at the photographer of the week from the last episode. So let's do that right now. And here we are with one of the most popular parts of the photography review show. It's time to look at the photographer of the week from the past episode, which was 7th of February 2022. Now, uh, the photographer of the week last week was John Dalston and his uh, portrait or dramatic portrait portfolio. Now, why I'm saying that is that uh, John has been photographer for over 15 years and he obviously really liked to capture many different photography styles. Now, as he say himself, his popular and favorite styles are portrait photography or people photography and then uh, animal or pets portraits. So this is why also John has uh, several Instagram accounts and the first one we're looking at is his uh, portrait Instagram account. So obviously when you look at the portraits themselves as you can see, they kind of showcase the first thing we really, really like and something what we always look at uh, at the photographers and that's a recognizable style. So uh, that is something what's really, really important. You start by uh, learning how to improve your technical skills, then you look for the right composition and then to put it together, you have to create your own photography style. So when somebody look at your images, they want to look at the images and say, oh yeah, they belong to John. So that's John's photos. That's easily recognizable. And I think that's something what he really manages very well. Other than the fact that John is very good at working with light, also working with drama, working with the subject. I, I think all the combination together really works very, very well. Um, his uh, portrait photography across is very good, but I really like the black and white photography as well. I think lots of people think that both photographers can hide behind black and white photography, but that's actually not the case at all. Black and white photography shows even the smallest mistakes and uh, I think uh, John does great job by showing uh, uh, his uh, models and people in the best light possible. So if you want to see more of John's work and you want to look at his portrait photos, here is uh, his portfolio for the portraits. Uh, here is actually his starting point where you want to go and uh, learn more about John. So then there are different links. So as I said, on the beginning this is obviously a mixture of different styles of photography and then we go into the pets there is some semis cuts right here there is more cuts here and then finally there are the portraits here so john congratulations well done we love your photos so keep shooting and make sure you keep sending us more photos in the future and the same goes for all of you folks if you want to become our photographer of the week or if you simply want to have your photos reviewed make sure that you join us head to our website cleverphotographer.com review where you can find all the upcoming dates all the upcoming coming links and more information about how you can join us already next week. So that is out of the way and now let's jump into the actual reviews. 
And here we are with the first part of today's show where we're going to be looking at the landscape photographers. Now we have a 13 landscape photographers to look at, so we need to go straight into it. But before that, I just wanted to remind you to please make sure that you like the video, that you leave us a comment. And also, as usual, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel so we can continue creating content like this. Anyway, here we are. Let's jump straight to it. We have an ad and his images here. So uh, let's have a look what we have. Uh, they you look very similar. So let's have a look. Maybe one of them is actually a raw file. Let's jump to it right here. Yep, this is a raw file and this is a JPEG. So a little bit of editing done there already. And again, this is a JPEG and this is a raw file. So we can probably see what editing was done there. So let's focus on the JPEGs in this case so we can actually see and say what was done to it at uh, starting uh, looking at it just from the kind of first impression. I love them both. Uh, impressive, uh, obviously, scenes uh, with this one, um, beautiful reflection and beautiful composition on this one. And this one, again, very dramatic, uh, amazing sky here and great contrast with the kind of dark uh, rocks at the bottom and kind of warmer and more brighter tops. So both of them I really, really like. So let's jump into it and let's have a look at the details. So looking at this one, uh, the camera was Fujifilm. Uh, the lens looks like a 23 millimeters, if I'm right. And uh, when we look at the actual camera settings, we have an ISO 200, uh, F9, 1, 100. 25th second. So um, from just kind of looking at it like this, I think the settings are pretty cool. Uh, ISO 200, obviously, we always try to stick as much as we can to 100, but uh, depends on the conditions. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, I think one 125th second is quite good. You could have probably go a little slower and still be fine, even a handheld. F9 is spot on. You will get the best uh, performance out of your lens in this case, and also you you will get the sharpness all the way through, which really, really works here. Moving into the actual image, you can see the level of detail, which is brilliant um, all the way through, which I think it's very impressive. You can actually recognize each of the individual trees, and that is very, very cool. Then I, what I really like when it comes to exposure is the fact of that you can see the texture and the clouds in the sky, again, reflecting in the actual water. So I think that's very well done too. The colors are a little bit tuned down, but still, um, it's just a lot of beautiful details, uh, beautiful exposure and overall technically really well done image. So uh, at well done on this one, I think technically it's very well handled. Now we talking about this one and we obviously still with the same camera uh, looking like a same lens as well. ISO 100, F14, one, uh, 125th of a second on this one as well. So obviously pretty much the same setting here on this one, you ISO 100. Uh, so obviously the camera can do it. So that's quite cool. Um, obviously, especially worth it for these kind of darker parts where probably if you would go higher with the ISO, it would show. But like this, looking at it, it looks very, very cool. F14 is a little bit higher, but uh, then I don't know what the light condition was. Again, F14 is still very manageable. Uh, just kind of a reminder that the higher you go, there is kind of common myth and something I've been answering for quite a few weeks now is a lot of people think that uh, the higher they're going to go with their f-stop, the more details they're going to get. And actually, the opposite is true. I would probably never really go further than f-16, at least on my lenses, but every lens is a little bit different. And the reason is that once you hit a certain spot, which is some lenses f-16, some f-20, uh, you will actually start to rapidly lose the details and everything will become very pixelated. So f-14 obviously is perfectly fine, but it's just something I thought it would be good to mention. I love the detail in the sky. I love this kind of almost like a sun um, artifact or uh, halo. I think that really creates very beautiful and dramatic sky. Again, the details here looks really, really good. I like also the clouds covering some parts here. And I think the composition together like this with this is very, very cool. I like how it's tuned down, how the colors are, um, how the colors are really kind of just uh, tuned down to maybe a few um, different colors rather than having it full color. And and I think it works very, very well. So just kind of sticking to the technical part, uh, I like how the details are standing out here. I like that the contrast between the shadows and highlights, however, still getting, whoops, let's go back, however, still getting 
let's just kind of zoom out. However, still getting a nice detail and everything is nicely visible. I think all in all, add beautiful, beautiful image. Sticking with the composition here, um, this is a great example of the kind of rule of thirds being applied to landscape and the sky and the land. Uh, that is also a very powerful way to apply it. Um, it's quite often what we can do is to stick to one third of the image being the land and then two thirds of the image being the sky. That is in the case where the sky is really your main subject, which I think in this case it's uh, true. I think this is all uh, what it's about. And then obviously the rocks just giving us a really nice balance and pushing the drama a little bit further. So uh, if we just kind of look at the cropping, it works perfectly here. What also is really nice that these main subjects are even better on the actual thirds. So another great way to use the thirds all together. So all together, put it together, I think it's great. I think it's a, a great rule of third applied twice here. Uh, I think the contrast of the colors works really high, really lovely here. Uh, the contrast of the shapes as well, you have this kind of really sharp um, objects in a contrast with this kind of smooth and uh, very kind of gluey um, objects here in the sky. So all in all, I think it just works very well. Again, the halo or the kind of artifact here is again on the third. So all together, very well done. On this one, when it comes to composition, again, a lovely reflection, which I think really plays a great part here. I also like how you kind of place the composition almost in the center. So I think it's always, it doesn't, it's always good to bring the, the reflection as close to the center as you can because it really creates a very balanced composition in this case and um, in it really just works here very well. There's nothing wrong about being a little bit off because that just makes the viewer a little bit more attentive but uh, it just works very very well. I think again this being in the center and creating the kind of flow through works excellent too and um, all in all it's just very very lovely. So both of them, great job. Uh, and just finishing it off with the composition, uh, with the uh, post-processing. Um, maybe just I would, what I would do, I would probably add a little bit more vignette here to kind of bring the attention in the center of the image. Because when you look at it like this, these two parts are a little bit flat. I think it may be missed a little bit of local adjustments. Uh, nothing huge, nothing unnatural. Just touch here and there to kind of bring more attention towards the center. I think you've done some of it on the sky that works very, very well, which bringing me to the sky itself, specifically these clouds here. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, specifically these clouds here seems to be very, very sharp uh, compared to the rest of the image. I would maybe just put, um, select the sky and maybe minus the clarity a little bit to add a little bit of fluffiness to them just to make them a little bit more realistic that's what i would do other than that it's perfect um it's excellent image it's well handled and all in all well put together maybe one more thing i was thinking about is to have a look at your white balance because with that amount of a green some shades starting to actually add up the green into them so i'm sure if we would go into the green and hit auto it would push the purple up i wouldn't necessarily bring up the temperature i think the coolness kind of work here maybe just a touch but the tint definitely and let me just show you before and after you can see when you look into the actual rocks and in this area, of course, not the tree, not necessarily the water, but when you, um, let's just do this back again. Uh, when you push the tint a little, the green stay green, the water stay green. However, the rocks get more natural, realistic color. And it's perfectly normal. The camera obviously absorbing lots of green color. So then it starts to apply it to the other parts of the image. It happens usually with green and a blue as well is a good one for this. When there is lots of blue sky, the blue start to kind of leak into other parts of the image. So just something to kind of think of and look at. Now this one, uh, when it comes to post-processing, I actually have nothing to add here. I think it's brilliantly done. Again, I really like how it's just a certain shades of the image. Maybe one thing I would do, I would kind of close it from the bottom just a little bit with maybe a little linear gradient, simply just to really keep the attention towards the top of the image. So just something like this. Um, but that's about it. Other than that, add it's Excellent edit, excellent picture. Both of them are very well done and you should be really proud of them. So well done. If you have more pictures, just as always, make sure you send them over to us and make sure that you keep shooting. So moving on to the next photographer, we have Alan. 
and we have a two landscape images from Alan. So Alan, let's have a look at it. One, two. So um, nice and bright landscape on both. Um, so let's start with this one. Let's have a look if we have any details and we have. So Nikon D810 with Tamron 2470 and the camera settings. So ISO 320, F14, 1, 100 of a second. Now, um, Looking at the light conditions, um, I don't see a reason why you would have to go above 100 on your ISO, simply because there should be more than enough light to um, kind of uh, keep it on 100 and still be able to take the picture and help. Now, F14 is again maybe coming back to what I was just saying. Um, I understand that you want to sharpness all the way through and you done very well done with that. Obviously, the mountains are still very sharp all the way. But I think F11 would have just done exactly the same job, or it does most of the time for me. And at that point, you would have been able to bring the ISO down and keep an eye on your uh, shutter speed. But even shutter speed, you can go usually as far as 1 50th of a second. And uh, that, that really depends on if you have any st image stabilization or not. But 1 50th of a second should be still safe enough to be able able to handheld shot like this and have it all nice and sharp and that way you can avoid the ISO 320 and having have to do too much of a post-processing after. This is maybe why when I zoom in some parts of the image looks almost like a touch of like a watercolors so maybe there was some post-processing done to it to try to avoid the noise and that's why you kind of getting some of these artifacts. Now let me just tell you, as a first impression, it's a beautiful image. It's just when we start to dig into these little details, uh, that's where you maybe get a few hints from me. So it's not that there is anything wrong with the image. It's just a few tips for the future when you're going to be shooting again. Now, moving into the actual picture, when I forget about the details, um, the sharpness is there or the you know the kind of texture and that kind of details uh, so that's very well done obviously again all the way through which is really really cool um even though it was probably quite sunny day the shadows are quite manageable they're not as harsh as uh they could be so i quite like that i quite like how you kind of open them here um uh obviously they are a little bit more visible on these trees but together they create quite nice scene so that's good um the depth of field here doesn't really play as much uh, as much um, to us. However, the exposure is quite well done. There is still some uh, details in the sky, and all in all, I think technically this is quite well done. Now, talking about this one and still sticking to the uh, technical details here. So, if I am right. It's the same camera and same lens. However, the settings is again a little bit different. So this time we are ISO 500, F16, 1 100 of a second. So is it pretty much? Um, you really uh, seems to be going, Alan, for a high ISO. Where again, F16, I don't necessarily think it's needed in this case. Um, because I think F11 would have done the job. You really need to try. I don't know how your lens performs, so that's uh, just kind of from me uh, differently. But again, at this time of the day when it's so bright, really you shouldn't have to go for ISO 500 and then having have to worry about the nice noise too much. Now, again, when I kind of zoom in, you can see how uh, the details start to turn into kind of watercolor effect, just something to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, other than that, I mean, the texture and the details are there all the way. I really like the texture in the sky. I think that looks very, very cool. Um, all together, I think it's quite well done. I would be in, I think, for what you should look at is the conversion between your f-stop and how high do you really have to go next time you're there. Just take f11 and f16, compare them and see what you can do. Obviously, another way to do it is to take one picture shooting uh, and focusing on the first part of the image and then move your focus on the uh, mountain and have two of them together and in Photoshop just kind of blend them if maybe the f11 wouldn't do the same job because I always think it's better to have a two images without noise and blend them together than having one image, however, with extra noise. So I think just kind of you we sometimes have to do a little bit of work together, but uh, still two of them, I think quite well done. 
keep an eye on the ISO and f-stop would be my message. Now talking about composition, this one is brilliant. Loving the flow, loving the leading line, loving how it points towards the mountain at the back, which creates really nice contrast towards the green. Again, uh, even, the, even the storytelling, obviously the snow compared to sun and green, I think works very, very well. And looking at two of them, I, th I can clearly see that you have a really good eye for composition. Uh, so all in all, two of them just really, really well done. Uh, looking at this one, love the flow of the river. Uh, I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful image with these kind of rocks creating great contrast, color contrast towards the sky and towards the trees. And altogether, I think two of them, when it comes to compositions, are very, very well done. Now, uh, talking about this one and post-processing, I'm just going to keep an eye on making sure that everything is nice and straight. So I don't know if geometry could help us in this case. Let's see. Auto, does it do a little bit for us? Just a little bit, kind of straighten some of the trees there. I'm not 100% sure about it. I would like to see the raw file for that, but at least I think something like this would be a little helpful, uh, but you can keep it like this. It's just that this one poking away, just give away a little bit that it's kind of tilting around. Uh, let's just go back. What was the 24 millimeter? It's just wide. It's not crazy wide, but it's wide, obviously. So that's why you may be getting these kind of poking trees on the side. Now, um, other than that, maybe a little bit of vignette to kind of bring more attention towards the flow here. Now that can be done in effects by using the vignette tool. So I would, I usually go around minus 15. I never go further than that because once you start to go further than that, it's really visible. I barely do that. So I think minus F15 always helps just to close it a little bit. And then if you want to add vignette to this point, you just use masking tool, radial gradient, then point it at the actual view here and then invert it and then just bring the exposure down. What it does is basically darken everything other than this view and help the whole picture in overall. Now on this one, uh, there is a huge part of the trees here, which I don't think are necessarily needed there. So I would probably crop them away just a little bit if I unlock this and maybe get something like this. Um, almost, you could almost go for that 16, 19, uh, 69, which is your kind of panorama view. And I think when you get something like this, it's so much like a punch in, it's so much uh, more cinematic and visual. And suddenly you're really focusing on the river and the rocks compared to when you have all these extras. I am always a huge fan of saying that if the part of the image doesn't give anything to the storytelling, to the composition. It doesn't necessarily need to be there. And I think in this case, you have there still all the main ele elements. However, you're focusing more of them and you don't wasting the energy and the view space on the other parts. So I think something like this and uh, the, the rest of the story is same. I think it's always good to add a little vignette just to bring the viewer in the center of the image. When you go as far as minus 15, the, the, the people generally don't even notice. They don't know it's there. However, it's there. It's more the brain working and really bringing the viewer in. So there you have it. This is what I have done. Uh, still, Alan, excellent captures, beautiful colors, beautiful scenery. Well done. Congratulations. And keep shooting. And if you have more images, make sure you send them to us in the future. Moving on to the next photographer, we have another Alan. Alan, we have uh, two images from you. So one with the photographer here and one from the harbor. So let's jump to it. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look if we have any photography details we have on this one. We don't have on this one. This one almost look like maybe um, it was an image printed and then taken picture of it again with this kind of um, matte almost effect on it. Maybe I'm wrong on that, uh, but this one we have. So let's have a look at it. That was a Nikon D90. The lens is 18 to 200 millimeters. And when it comes to your camera settings, ISO 200, 50 millimeter, F8, 1 250th of a second. So um, the ISO 200 is quite fine. I don't know exactly what the light conditions were. Obviously with 1 of 50 of a second, you wanna make sure that you keep it on so your photographer is sharp. What it does to the water, it creates this kind of frozen effect rather than the nice smooth effect. I prefer the smooth, but I understand in this um, composition, you have to either get one or the other. So just something to kind of think of. Uh, F8 obviously is a good 
good value for this kind of scene. Everything is sharp and uh, working. Now, when I zoom in, I see a little bit of noise poking through anyway. So I wonder um, if your camera maybe is naturally quite noisy, but with 200, it shouldn't be as bad. So maybe you need to do a little bit in more in post-processing just to push a little bit of a noise reduction. It's kind of seen in the darker parts, also on the gray here and on the rocks. Other than that, I think the setting. So F8 is perfect. One 250th of a second is good as well. Um, ISO 200, again, just a rule of thumb, try to stick 200 as possible. However, that's it. Now the sharpness, obviously there is kind of nice depth of field where these parts are a little bit more blurry. The gentleman is always in focus and so are the rocks and the water is nice and frozen. I think the exposure is quite good in this case and technically it's quite well done. Obviously we don't have a details on this one and it just looks touch soft. So if it's the case that you took picture of a picture in this case, that's maybe the reason because when I kind of zoom in, the animal seems to be sharp and so on, but it's just kind of really difficult to say where the matte color and the little softness is coming from. But um, since we don't have a details, let's move on to the composition. Now, composition on this one is very, very nice. I think it's very kind of storytelling capture with the birds, with the houses, with the boats. The boats are nice and sharp as well. It kind of really creates beautiful storytelling foreground with the rocks at the back as a nice background, creating a really nice contrast where you get all these kind of brighter white colors and then you have a dark color at the back. It just works together. The birds add a little bit more to the story and it's really kind of nice seascape scenery, almost like a travel photography capture and very, very well done. Now, talking about this one and composition, let's just kind of, um, one thing which is a little bit tricky, uh, it's just there is a few different things happening and it's a bit difficult to say what is the story about. Is it about the actual falls, which in this case, I would believe so because obviously you have them on the third and they are kind of major element in the photo. I think the photographer helps because it adds a sense of scale in this case. So, you know, so you, when you look at the falls, you kind of understand how big they are. So I think that's quite smart and helpful. Um, and um, that's about it. Yeah, um, I think it would be really lovely if the water would be a little bit smooth and maybe to do a combination, maybe do one longer exposure and one with the gentleman and then blend them together. However, still, I think it's quite cool. All in all, uh, it's it's quite smart composition. You use some of the main tools quite well together. Uh, so well done, Alan. Now, when it comes to post-processing, on this one, I would check your white balance first. When I do the auto, I don't think I would do more warmth necessarily, maybe just a touch and with the tint. So why do we get the tint? Because there is some colors from the actual rocks. So that's not a big deal. I think it's cool. Uh, when it's done like this, it works quite well. So uh, white balance is good. Um, maybe in effects, little vignette just to close the uh, view and point it towards the actual photographer. And now let's just kind of come back to the white balance and point it at the water. What would it do? Yeah, something like this. But I, I assume that the river was maybe a little darker. Maybe it's like a spring or autumn when there is a lot of water going through. So just something to kind of keep an eye on. Let's have a look at your whites just to make sure with the option. That's all good. Blacks, maybe close them a little bit more. And that's about it. That's where I would leave it. Now talking about this one, um, again, just maybe a little bit of vignette on this one to close it a little bit more. Uh, and then leave it because I think it has a character. It has a kind of vintage feel to it and it just works very well. So Alan, a pleasure to review your photos. If you have more, make sure you send them in the future. And most importantly, keep shooting. Moving on the next photographer, we have Alex. Alex keeps sending us more and more photos. So thank you very much, Alex. It's always a pleasure to see them. And we have something a little bit different this week. So we have a obviously kind of night capture with the with the torch towards the sky on this one. And then we are somewhere in a desert. So let's have a look if we have any details. And we have in this case, so this is a death valley. This as well, great. And looking at the camera, so Canon 6D Mark II, uh, the lens was 24 to 105 and your camera setting. So ISO 1250, 24 millimeter in this case, F4, 1 40th of a second. 
Now, one forty-eighth of a second. I wonder where you on where you handheld. Are you trying to handheld it? That's why uh, you. Stick to one fortieth of a second and went with ISO to one thousand two hundred fifty, which obviously, regardless what camera you use, will bring fair bit of noise. Now um, you done some post processing to it, however, it's still a little bit visible. So if you can write me in a comment, Alex, just to let me know uh, why you didn't use tripod for this scene, was there any kind of reason? I would like to know more. Uh, it's always helpful to just kind of keep push things a little bit further. Um, so uh, out of the setting, it's just the ISO I'm kind of baffled by. Um, it's more about the storytelling on this one. I think it's a little bit over bright for me. I think if you would have darkened it a little bit, bringing out the exposures just a touch, uh, it would hide even some of the noise. And I think since this was probably in the night anyway, it would make it a little bit more realistic. Now, moving on this one, I love this one. And it looks like a, what looks like the same camera and same lens. This time ISO 1000 f4, 30 seconds. Now, this is more like it, uh, obviously, uh, with oh, 30 seconds. Uh, so this must have been really in a night. Um, well done on keeping the lady as sharp as possible, lady or man, or, um, and the foreground sharp, and the stars are beautiful with the shine. I think it just works very well. The sharpness is great. The setting is quite all right. Um, and uh, all in all, technically, I think this one is really well done. Now, moving on to composition, it's super well done, Alex, but when with these kind of scenes, what I really like, number one, is if you would at least leave one third of this. I think there is really a point when you cut too much of the land and it start to really be just too little. So um, just to kind of give you an idea what I would be looking for, let's just unlock this. I would be looking more for something like this and suddenly it's still not enough there should probably be more but then we lose completely the sky but you're looking for something around this point where you kind of have this much ground for a future i think it's always helpful um also maybe the foreground just lit touch darker would probably help as well um it's still beautiful sky i think again well done on using the torch and applying it it's never really easy especially with 30 second uh shutter speed so all in all the foreground elements works very well the lady or the uh, model with the shining light uh, just very well done on this one the composition is excellent love the flow and leading line towards the rest of the desert love the glow um it's just very very the very kind of minimalistic view what i would do i would definitely crop it as well to maybe something like 69 and down just to get maybe something like this. And really uh, the main reason being that there is really nothing happening on the sky and there is a lot of it. So again, you could maybe uh, just kind of do something like this if you would want to, but then there is this part, which is not necessarily completely uh, important. And you really probably want to have your third near to this leading point. And you would get something like this, just as powerful and still beautiful. Now, when it comes to post-processing, as I said already on this one, I would love the exposure a little bit and probably just highlight some parts with a brush so that way you get reduce of some of the noise and um, and just make it a little bit more realistic obviously in details uh, a little bit of more of the noise reduction although I'm sure you've done already and then just use the brush with a little bit of exposure kind of highlighting these main parts uh, to get something like this i think so this is where i would leave it i think it's still great capture obviously just learning curve for next time for the iso which will help in overall especially i mean if you manage this picture with the model on it and everything having sharp you should be totally fine to manage something like this maybe just the tripod for next time or i'm wondering what was the reason now post processing on this one as I say, all I would do to it is to apply little mask on the foreground and make it just a little bit darker because it's really bright. I think it takes attention away from the main subject, which is the sky. I think the, um, I think the 
it's excellent that you capture it and everything however you want to keep the attention towards the sky itself so alex thank you very much something different it was great to see it uh, keep shooting and please keep sending pictures over we would love to learn more and see more moving on the next landscape photographer jay marik jay we have the uh, two pictures here seascape and this black and white waterfall so let's jump into them let's have a look at the camera details uh, let's see if they are so uh, both same camera same lens so nikon z6 24 to 70 on this one iso 128 millimeters f11 one fifth of a second now i love the flow in the water i think that's brilliant very very well done and that really creates beautiful contrast with the rest of the image in black and white great um compression well done just excellent i like the sharpness um maybe with a touch of softness on this part also um, I'm not sure about this artifact, what's happening here. It's just, uh, it looks like maybe there was some post-processing done here. It's visible as well. They are just kind of really sharp elements here on this one as well. So something to kind of look at um, in your post-processing. However, when it comes to technical details and a black and white photography, I think this is very well handled. Now, talking about this one, uh, the uh, settings were ISO 100. Um, 43 millimeters f8 1 400 of a second so i think all in all first thing when we shoot something like this is to make sure that our boats are uh, sharp and they are so well done there so 1 400 of a second work there f8 is good you have will have everything nice and sharp which worked very well in this case and iso 100 is as safe as it can get now again when i zoom in i see certain part of the image with artifacts from post processing maybe you you done some editing to the uh, sky or maybe you replace the sky but it's just something you really need to kind of keep an eye on to make sure that it's not as visible when you look at it first uh you can't see that much when you zoom in you see these circles here as well with some cloning probably um and then these parts here as well so a little bit more work to be done jay in post-processing however as the technical details goes i think it's very well done now composition loving this one the foreground the contrast of the colors the contrast of no, no, contrast of the color the contrast of the brightness i think it really works there is nothing more contrasted than black and white and the shades i think it really works beautiful it's clear right away what the main subject is the flow is there as well with the long water so all in all i think very very well done and excellent uh composition on this one now on this one i think it's touch too tight for me um simply because there is just lots happening on a little amount of space now boats 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 uh, then a little bit of sky a little bit of the reflection um i'm not sure what the rest of the file looked like but it's just maybe a little bit too tight it's not too bad i mean um still uh, there are still nice elements with the reflection and with the nice sky just maybe if it would be a little bit more wider maybe it would help all in all now post-processing on both of them this is really well handled black and white post-processing however again keep an eye on these elements uh the kind of sharp edges and find out what they're from and this one really needs a little bit more work because there is a lots of pieces uh still kind of leaking through and these circles from probably cloning on something also need a little bit of extra work so jay thank you very much for sending us your photos it was a pleasure to review them take care and uh, send us more in the future moving on the next photographer we have a jean claude uh, and jean claude sent us one image is that right one image let's have a look if we have any details about it sadly it looks very very um very very blurry now what's the size 420 or 572 jungle i would love to review it however i think the size is so small that it's really difficult to give me the two for me to give you a feedback on it as look at the size i can't see so just kind of looking at it like this uh, just a very quick one and with the suggestion for you to send us an image for next week in a bigger size so i can tell you more about it like, just kind of looking at the camera settings iso 640 100 millimeters f20 to one one 
25th of a second. Now, the ISO is a little bit too uh, high, but then depending on the light condition, which again are from this little bit difficult to say, F22 seems to be also very, very high f-stop. Uh, generally in landscape photography, not used too often. Usually when you hit F20, F22, you start to introduce softness and really kind of remove the sharpness. Also bring pixelated artifacts in. So if with the f-stop, it's always good to stick somewhere between F7 to F11 or F16 max. But if you send me the image in original view, I will be happy to tell you more about it. ISO 640, again, a little bit high. I guess it would introduce a little bit of noise to it. However, as the composition goes, it's very, very lovely. I love the tree. I love the contrast of the colors little bit of reflection, little bit of light coming from the side. So I think that's quite nicely done. The post-processing seems to be quite nice and clean as well with the lovely contrast between the orange and white. So Jean-Claude, if you have the image in a bigger size, please make sure you send it over next week and I will be more than happy to review it for you. Now let's jump into the next photographer, which is Jim. Jim, we have the two images from Scotland. Now this place is in Glencoe, I believe in Scotland. Uh, and this is definitely the Nice point on the Isle of Skye. The reason being, I spent there five years photographing this place. Um, one of my, probably one of my most favorite spots on the island. And Glencoe is just as epic and obviously incredible capture here with beautiful fog and sky, uh, great foreground, all in all, excellent image. So let's talk about this one. Let's see what we have, if we have any camera details. Uh, not on this one, that's really shame. And not on this one. So no camera details. For Jim, for a future, it's always good to send us the camera details so I can tell you a little bit more about it. Still, uh, looking at it like this, heavy vignette. Now with the vignette, it's always good to go a little bit back further. The further you go, uh, more it's visible. Sometimes we are really close to the screen and uh, we don't really notice how much of a vignette we added. It's only when we are really back off, we can see uh, that actually at some point you're going to the complete black. Um, when I go into the light here and hold option, no command, or, or alt or option, sorry, <laughs> alt for windows, option for Mac, and I hit the blacks, everything what's dark is um, obviously complete black. It's completely uh, kind of darkened down and uh, it wouldn't look great on the print. Now like this, it's okay, but it wouldn't look great. So I wonder, um, there are no details left there. It's just one thing I'm kind of noticing. Other than that, um, there is a fair bit of noise on this one from just this kind of look. However, you maybe add a little bit of grain to it, which wouldn't be the end of the world. It would create quite kind of cinematic look. Um, so I think that's all right. Um, the light is quite nice. Uh, typical Isle of Sky, I think for me there. Um, mood is sky so to be honest all in all i quite like it the sharpness is good uh all the way through the leading line uh it's just the win vignette i would be maybe putting a little bit less of that effect uh when it comes to uh composition on this one this is your kind of typical uh great view when you go all the way down you have the path which creates great flow you have the main subject at the end which works really really well also keeping the sky and the main subject in the top third is a great uh, composition trick and it works very very well so i think as a composition goes this is super well done jim and well thought and well executed now uh, coming back to this one when it comes to the technical point uh, let's have a look when you zoom in um I think the sharpness is there. I think what I really like is the skies, the details. So obviously the exposure, the highlights, the shadows work very, very well. Um, um, the, obviously again, details in a foreground, a little bit of darkness here in the foreground again, but nowhere near to this. I think this one really works and putting together, put it together. I think it's a, it's a beautiful image. Now, since we here, let's talk about the composition as well. Excellent, well handled for Foreground uh, with the river here, the main subject and uh, this kind of point really giving us a sense of scale, uh, the kind of middle ground, uh, but also a subject just before we jump to the background with the beautiful mountains, rocks and sky and uh, clouds and a fog and it's just 
epic. That brings me to the post processing, which I think is spot on in this one. Keep an eye on your blacks, um, just to kind of make sure that um, that everything is nicely balanced. But all in all, this is Jim, excellent, excellent capture. Uh, and uh, half of the success here is to be able to be there with these conditions. Another part of the success is the fact that you were able to capture it like this. So thumbs up. Uh, now on this one with the post-processing, it's really kind of push, dramatic push. Uh, the colors are full on. Um, I like that look. I know there will be some photographers which will not. And really my main message for this one is uh, the vignette, especially down here. Jim, I hope you enjoyed your trip to Scotland. Maybe you're Scottish. Uh, if not, uh, hopefully you'll be back. Uh, if you have more pictures from your trip, make sure you send them over. We would love to see them. Okay, it's time to look at another photographer, Lori this time. Lori Griezmann. Lori, we have uh, two images from you. Now, uh, let's jump into the details of both of them. Mm, let's see, just zoom out a little. Um, this one is really, really small. Now, this one is cool. Uh, that's the right size. However, this one is nine eight nine pixels, Lori. I'm, I'm wonder. Usually, your pictures are more like the first one. However, let's have a look at them. Uh, talking about this one, um, the Canon 5D Mark II, 24 to 105. Now, uh, the settings, camera setting, ISO 500 f4, one eightieth of a second. So I assume maybe you didn't have a tripod with you on this one because the ISO is really high. Uh, now kind of zooming in, it is a little bit visible um, on the sky and maybe a little bit on the kind of darker parts as well. F4 um, is really fast and that's maybe why you're getting the kind of a depth of field, maybe different parts being a little bit less or more sharp. Uh, one eightieth of a second is close to uh, the uh, the point where obviously usually we say about one fiftieth of a second is where as, as slow as you can handheld your camera. However, um, one eighty should be still fine. So it's a kind of combination of probably uh, a moment when there was a great uh, opportunity for a photography, but maybe you were not exactly set. Um, so just something to kind of think of for the future. Now, um, from out of it all, I think the ISO 500 is what gives you a little bit of the problems on the image together. Now, when we come, that also brings a little bit of, the F4 brings a little bit of softness on the main subject of the rocks here. Uh, that's something to kind of look at. Now, the oh, exposure in overall, I think the sky is uh, full of details, which is really nice. Obviously, there must have been some epic sunset happening or sunrise. So there's a lot of color happening there as well. The Highlight shadows are quite cool. However, I think the starting point is the noise on this one. Now, now when we zoom out with this one, and maybe just next time, just double check the size of the image. Lori, um, when we zoom out, it looks quite all right. I mean, the settings here are much better. ISO 100, uh, so spot on. F7.1, which is the kind of golden point. It's always kind of my starting point. And 1 200th of a second is good as well. Um, if you have gone a little bit slower, maybe you could get a little bit more smoothness in the actual lake. But all in all, I think this picture is all about the scene and about the composition which uh, moving to that is actually really cool. I really like the foreground here, giving us a sense of depth. Otherwise, it, the image could look a little bit flat, but this really helps. The reflection is also really, really nice. Uh, it's a little bit uh, pushed to the green, which we can check in the color afterwards, but the mountain is beautiful, so it's very, very epic. If I could say my only thing is, I would wish that there is a little bit more space on the top, uh, just to let it breathe all together just a little bit more. That's all I would add to this. Now, talking about this one and talking about composition, I think it's quite well done. I really like this kind of shape it creates and makes it quite balanced. Uh, obviously, the main subject is the sky together with these rocks, so that works quite cool. 
Uh, maybe you could crop it a little bit from the side to kind of create a little bit more balance so you could probably get uh, something like this and it would create and make it a little bit more balance in overall but altogether i think it's a uh, composition wise very well done picture and uh, obviously epic epic scene now when we talk about uh, post-processing i think the colors are a little bit harsh and i'm wondering about your exposure so if we go to whites and we hold option or old they seems to be fine so that's good there now let's have a look at your white balance uh, what would it do uh, so maybe no that much down but maybe more towards something like this i think if it would help and uh, show me let me show you before let's just reset this um the yellow together with the rocks creates kind of a little bit of a flat view now where we push down the blue a little uh, then the background and the sky becomes a little bit cooler and it creates a little bit more contrast with the foreground so i think that's quite cool now the uh does the tint needs to go down not necessarily but maybe that would be a good thing to do together with little vignette as always to bring the attention into the center and maybe a little bit of more brushing on the actual sky to add little bit more contrast to it so maybe something like this would be helpful so that's this one and talking about this one and if i zoom out again um i think this one is more about the cropping to be honest and definitely the white balance if i go to auto uh, you can see how it pushed the pink up a little i wouldn't add necessarily more warmth maybe just a touch but the pink definitely just to get more of the natural color back in the lake and in the mountains so lori uh this one the size would be my thing uh, if you could send pictures in a little bit bigger that would be great and on this one is the sharpness on the rocks and a little bit of the noise in the sky so lori thank you very much for sending your images over it's a pleasure to see them as always take care and uh, hope to see more of your pictures soon now next we have michael michael stubber michael we have a two images from you to look at this one with quite impressive leading line and uh, scene this one with very nice long exposure with the kind of fall right here uh let's have a look at them let's see if we have any camera details and we have so this was nikon d750 14 millimeters lens so a really nice and wide lens and from the settings iso 100 40 millimeter f11 1 25th of a second so iso 100 is the golden goal so well done there f11 is perfectly fine you will get everything sharp usually all the way through which i think work very well 1 25th second if you were on tripod very well done if not it really depends if you have any camera stabilization um it looks sharp so looking at it like this the sharpness is there it seems a little bit underexposed um for me just a touch i would probably open it a little bit more and it seems like it's a raw file which is maybe not edited is that right um probably uh, so obviously bringing down the highlights opening the shadows would help all together just to do something like this um would help pass and let's have a look at the yeah something like this so uh we're gonna just kind of judge the technical part then where i think the sharpness is quite good uh, there is a little bit of noise coming through let's have a look at the details on this one um again um just it's interesting because if it's iso 100 and you getting this kind of noise in the dark details that could be coming from the lens all in all i think it's still very very cool and uh, very well done um looking at this one mm, is it the same same camera different lens so this time 24 220 the settings were um iso 80 120 millimeters so really punched in f18 to second now this is a great example where because there is not really um uh, anything to give out the the scale of the image it could be epic epic waterfall or it could also be just this big so i think this is quite kind of smartly done uh shame for these elements here which taken a little bit away from the attention of the actual 
fall. However, when it comes to the setting of your camera, there is nothing really wrong with it. The sharpness of the elements around, which is really important with the longer exposure. You want to have a nice smooth water, but in contrast, you want to have a really nice sharp textures items. So I think that you done very, very well and it's well handled. The brightness is quite good. The exposure is good. So all in all, very well done on this one. Now, uh, talking about uh, composition, I think this is where this part here really take lots of attention away from the water and it's a little bit of a shame. I don't know if you could have gone a little bit towards the side or what you could do in order to avoid these because they would be quite tricky to remove in a post-processing. So that would be my idea. It's quite nice scene altogether. However, this takes lots of attention away. Now, when it comes to composition with this wise, it's quite nicely done, nice sky, nice leading line here. Here, obviously, I would crop it differently to maybe something like 16.9. Uh, you always kind of looking at it thinking of, um, could I maybe do something like this? And uh, then you kind of get reduced of what was there. Uh, crop it away. Uh, check the geometry here. Uh, not like this. Um, maybe just a little bit more like this and kind of work with that. That would be my idea of what to do with it. For the post-processing, that is, you would have to work with it more. I don't really have a time for it. You could do vignette. You could obviously highlight the, uh, highlight the, the road a little bit more you could work more with the sky but all in all i think that's where i would leave it on this one when it comes to post-processing what's really important with the longer exposure is always to check for your white balance and to do that with this little picker so this is way too much but i think something like this seems to be quite all right then maybe crop it a little bit more like this and then really kind of see what i could do with the rest but this one is more about the composition and framing because the rest of it is quite cool michael thank you very much for sending us the photos it was a pleasure to see them uh this one would just need the edit other than that i think it's quite well thought and quite well done this one is more about this element here and trying to see if it could be uh, shoot differently. Moving on to the next photographer, we have a Pedro. Pedro, one image from you. Uh, let's have a look if we have any camera details. And we don't. That's always a little bit tricky. Now, this one has a, obviously a special effect applied to it with lots of kind of smoothness and lots of uh, fog and dramatic sky and kind of painting around. So it's a bit difficult to review it the traditional way. Obviously, there is no camera details needed to tell you more about it. The composition is quite nice, although it all tilting a little bit towards the side. You can kind of almost see that this one is going up like this and this one as well. Uh, this tree seems to be straight, but this one is tilting a little bit. So um, if 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 you are going for this tree to be your main subject, I will probably crop it from the side a little bit. Um, if I would just unlock this and maybe see if I could position this more like this uh, and close it because there is lots of this space which doesn't really add anything to the composition. Of course, if this one is your main subject or this part, it, you could also just uh, kind of crop away uh, this and crop away this and maybe end up with something like this or just something like this. Really depends what you would like to do. However, I think the first thing you would need to check is your geometry because these three, when you see them, they're really falling down. And I think that would be my starting point. Then I would check for these blacks because they seem to be really, really kind of harsh. It creates really big contrast together with everything else. Um, but as a kind of dramatic uh, fantasy like capture, I think it's quite well done. You know, uh, I'm always for all kinds of creativity. Um, however, I always like to look out for a little bit of some kind of natural uh, look. And I think that's where I would be looking at sorting my camera distortion maybe adding a little bit less of the darkness, making it little, little bit visible. So some texture comes out and being it a little bit uh, trustworthy. All in all, Pedro, thank you very much for sending your photo. It was a lovely to see it. If you have more, make sure you send it in the future. Moving on the next photographer, we have a Rod. Rod, how many images from you? One, two, three. Rod, we can only do two every week. You see, we have lots of photographers to go through. So let's see which one should we talk about. Uh, this one or this one. We're going to talk about the one where I think you need a little bit more work because I think this one is great. 
and we're going to talk about this one because it's super cool so let's have a look if we have any camera details here and we do static with this one nikon d200 um and the camera settings iso 100 f4 1 30th of a second so quite cool settings um for this kind of scene i would have more gone for f7.1 but then i'm assuming maybe you didn't have a, a tripod with you so you need to kind of stick to 130 to make everything nice and sharp looking at it like this uh, the sharpness seems to be quite reasonable obviously with f4 there will be kind of a little bit of a softness to some of the elements really depends how many you add you can see that this is quite fairly sharp this you can still see the texture and everything however is uh, there is a little bit of softness on it mm, the sky is very very nice i'm not 100 sure if the sky was there like this before uh simply because um this seems to be like really bright day sky and the rest of it seems to be very flat and soft light however uh together it creates quite nice scene so um that's about where uh, i would kind of look at it from here so technically it's quite well done uh the settings on your camera are well done for handheld and that's where i would leave it one thing i would be looking out is is this kind of difference here now it can be um work on inside of the optics inside of the optics there is a remove chromatic aberration option which generally works only to some degree what you need to do after is to use this difference down here now difference usually comes in green and purple and it's really as simple as using this picker and first of all pointing at the purple and the kind of uh, darkest point of the purple so that's number one and then you need to switch to the green use the picker and point at the green so let's see something like this maybe was there even more green no something like this and there you have it so let's see before and after on some parts of the picture where is it i saw it more visible you can see the green here on the top still a little bit so this is a good one before after let me zoom in a little bit more this is before after it really helps to remove uh this kind of effect away now the difference or the chromatic aberration comes usually from a lens it's not a big deal it's really easy to remove it like this other than that technically i would leave it now moving on this one let's talk quickly about the technical details um as soon as we'll be able to get on so nikon d35 iso 200 f11 one fiftieth of a second so i think similar situation you were on um you were on uh probably no tripod f11 is quite cool obviously there are elements in front of the camera so you want to have the sharpness all the way through iso 200 which gives you um quite lots of noise i have to be uh i have to be honest and also when you zoom in a little bit more specifically for this part you see how soft it is which is very unusual for f11 so i wonder where your uh focus points were pointing at maybe at this part because this seems to be a little bit more sharper but it's always good to kind of move it around and see what works the best there's a lot of details in the sky again i'm not 100 percent sure if the sky was there like this before however it's not visible so that's quite cool let's leave it that way now talking about uh, composition these elements all help with the foreground i like the portion of the sky what you've done with it obviously these being the main element being positioned around the third is also very smart a little bit of a shame that there is this bush here because um, i'm not a big fan of these kind of half cut elements this is why also i would probably do something like this and kind of be done with that you can't do it with the top uh, with the bottom but you could do a little bit to maybe something like this and get something like this um, and that's about it other than that i think it's quite smartly done you know uh, we will talk about this one a little bit more in the post processing but as a composition goal i think it's quite cool now talking about this one and composition one thing i would check is a uh, geometry just to make sure the buildings are nice and straight so uh if the auto doesn't do the best job we will help it with the guide so something like this and something like this 
is always a good idea to do. Other than that, it's cool. I love the foreground, I love the building, I love the background as a mountain, I love the part of the sky. So all in all, wrote very well done. Now, post-processing, other than the chromatic aberration, this one is super cool, really like it, well handled. All maybe I would do to it is to add a little bit of linear gradient at the bottom here, uh, push it down, minus exposure just to close the image a little bit on this one uh, you can see how much blue you have into the mountains so that's something you need to check usually in a white balance is a good starting point so you get something like this um this is before this is after it all becomes a little bit more natural if you feel that there is too much yellow in the foreground here you can again use the linear gradient do something like this and maybe push it down a little then you get something like this now the second thing you need to look at is how flat the image is and you can simply uh, change that by using the vignette again and maybe a little bit of uh, brushing so brush and minus exposure on the kind of rocks here to add a little bit of contrast maybe here as well and something like this. So Rod, well done, great pictures, love this Western feel of them, congratulations. If you have more, make sure you send them over. If you want me to review the third one, just send it over for the next show. Take care, stay safe, and hope to see your images soon. So we have uh, two more photographers, first of, of course, Zorin. Zorin, we have this image right here. Still sticking, I can see with the winter wonderland mood. Uh, maybe in Romania there is still um, uh, there is still cold and snow. So let's have a look at it. Um, I mean, looking at it like this, looking at your camera. So this is Nikon Z6 with 50 millimeter uh, lens. The settings, ISO 100, spot on, F8, spot on, 1, 2, one 125th of a second is cool as well so the setting is actually spot on here the sharpness is all the way there a uh, beautiful sky at the back i think works very very well but uh, just as i mentioned before i think the sensor dust is something you need to kind of really keep an eye on there's a big one here and big one here i already showed and we already talked about um how it can be removed if you guys need to see it there is an actual video in the description on how to remove chromatic aberration uh, how to remove sensor dust from your pictures in lightroom and camera raw so that's just a kind of quick check down here and that's about it now the light is very very nice i like that as well so let's move to the composition when it comes to composition i think the whole thing is tilting a little bit so i would just kind of bring it back a little here and i would get reduce of this part here also because this one has a little bit more space it will help us anyway to make it a little bit more realistic so we get something like this and maybe push this one back and that's it so now we have the two trees creating nice frame this tree in the middle with a beautiful light together when it comes to composition very very well done now um it's kind of interesting mixture of colors let's just check for the white balance um to get something like this so originally it was probably even warmer okay um so what about the picker what does it give us too cold so i guess, so I guess somewhere in between really is the true so I think somewhere around here. So I think your original white balance was quite good. It was just worth the try. Obviously the rest is very, very nice. I like the contrast with the shadows, the beautiful light coming from the side help as well. It creates these nice lines here, which are very, very pretty. It's clean it, the storytelling or respect, uh, the subject is clear as well. So it's easy to recognize what it's about. And I love the sky at the back. So Zorin, well done, great capture, a beautiful light. Uh, I hope you will get a little bit of warm weather coming your way soon otherwise take care um, and send us more pictures in the near future which brings us to the final landscape photographer of the week which will be stevie stevie we have uh, two images from you both of them with birds funny enough uh this epic epic sunset right here or sunrise and then this kind of seascape with some uh beautiful rocks birds and waves so let's talk about this one first of all let's have a look if we have any details of the camera we do so that's a canon uh rebel now the camera settings iso 400 f11 1 500 of a second so iso 400 
Stevie, uh, the suggestion is always to stick to 100 as much as possible. Um, as you know, uh, obviously by increasing the number from 100, you will start to introduce digital noise and color noise, which I think it's quite visible here. When you look at the top of the image, you can see the fringement of the color and also the noise. I can also see a little bit of sensor dust here. Again, just like I was saying for Sorin, uh, there is a link in the description of how to remove it in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, there is this little tool, you can visualize the spot and you can really just very simply kind of click on the spot and it removes it like this. So it's really easy, uh, it takes a second and it really helps to make the picture a little bit cleaner. Um, so I think uh, really looking at it from the kind of technical point, the ISO is your biggest problem here. Now one 500th of a second help with the bird being sharp, I assume, and with really nice kind of detailed sky. So that's about it. Uh, this probably should be more like, um, more like, um, silhouette but it's still very cool now this one is completely differently uh, done however it's the same camera again and uh, mixed probably means that it's a blend of different things together iso 400 again this is why we're getting the kind of noise again this time even color noise um, however this picture is probably more about what's happening on it and this is why i think moving to the composition i would crop it a little bit more however these waves actually really help with the with the depth of the image so let's just have a look if we would crop it to something a little bit more panoramatic Let's say that we would do something like this. What would it do? Well, it would be a different image, but it could be an option. Uh, if you don't want to crop this part away, what I would make sure is that my horizon is straight, which can be really easily done here and then you get something like this. So uh, other than that, obviously the sharpness is on the kind of middle ground. This is a little bit soft, back is soft, which is quite nice with the depth. Um, the exposure, it's, Touch too bright for me, just bring it down a little bit, keeping an eye on my whites on the histogram, making sure that nothing is burned out would be my suggestion for this one. While we're here, let's talk about composition since we already captured and uh, kind of talk about many of that. The beautiful movement of the birds really help here. The background and the mountains uh, is very lovely too. Uh, the middle ground foreground element works here as well. So all in all, as a composition goes, it's very well done. Now on this one, saying that the sun is my main subject, I would definitely make it center. So just crop it from the side a little. And again, similarly, either you need the trees there or you don't need them. So if we would, for example, go for the 1609, the cinematic view, we would just do something like this. And leave it just as epic you have the bird you have the clouds you have the sun you have everything and really the trees the little bit of how much you have there wouldn't need to be there if you want to keep them there no problem uh, we can keep them like this however if you keep them there i would make them completely dark as a silhouette so the color or brightness and the noise on them don't distract us other than that epic with the bird beautiful beautiful capture so while we're here let's talk about the uh, post-processing um Let's say we would take away a little bit of the purple, which doesn't necessarily give us anything extra. So let's say we would just get something like this. And from here, I would just take the brush, uh, bring down the blacks exposure and really just make, and I will fix that in a second. So don't worry about it too much, but do something like this. Yep. And not as black but close the shadows and have something like this, I think would be helpful uh, for the cause. Um, and maybe from the top, making a little linear gradient would be great idea as well. Just something like this. Other than that, a uh, little vignette, as we say, always goes a long way. So you can do this and leave it from here. Now on this one, have a look at your white balance just to make sure that everything is nice. So not as warm, but a little bit of purple is a good thing. And I think in this case, just to make sure that not everything is as flat, vignette helps us a little bit and a little bit of local adjustments with maybe a little bit of uh, darker parts, um, not as much, but a little bit, I think would help just to create a little bit of 
contrast. So, uh, Stevie, that's about it. Beautiful two captures. I mean, this sky is absolutely epic, so you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you for sending it over. Thank you for lending us to review it. It was a pleasure. If you have more pictures, make sure you send them to us soon. And the same goes to all of you folks. If you want to join us for the Clever Photographers photography review show all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash review and that's where you can find the upcoming dates the upcoming links and all information you need in order to join us already for the next week's show thank you very much for joining us this week it was a pleasure take care stay safe and most importantly keep shooting